All right, exercise 39. So we want to prove that B is jointly continuous. So I'm going to let BR for right from X to LYZ um, be given by BR of X equals the function b of x, and then um, this dot is the dummy variable. So x is fixed here. So for every x, this gives us a function in, um, yeah, for every fixed, right, for every fixed x, this gives us a function in y that maps into z. So that's basically, yeah, it, it, yeah this thing here, okay? Let this be given by this and BL from, and that's not an E or a, like, pretty looks, pretty much looks like anything that's not an L, but it's an L. From Y to L, XZ by BL of Y equals same thing, but the Y is fixed. Then, BR and BL are linear. Um, yeah, because if you put in a linear combination, you get linear things, and then, yeah, because B is separately continuous by linear map. And by linear, is like, in this case, it's actually literally, well, it always is literally bilinear, linear in both things. So there we go. So that's linear. Um, we want, um, I won't write that out, but basically we're going to want to use the uniform boundedness principle. So note that for all x and x and y and y, the norm of bxy is equal to, just by definition, oh, I'm not going to fit in on this line. It's the norm of, well, this is the function br of x. brx gives us a function on y, and so we evaluate this at y. Um, but this is less than or equal to brx times y, and this is less than or equal to br times x times y. And this, um, we're, um, br is the supremum over here? I'm going to put this on the other line. God, line and dense. It's the supremum overall. Um, uh, no, it's a supremum of br of x, where x. Eh. No, erase. Okay. This is an x, and is this the norm of x? Is um, equal to one, and so this is just this supremum, and so this is allowed to take the value infinity, is what I'm getting at, uh, because basically when you take um, typically in this chapter when we define this norm on something, you define it once you know that the thing is a bounded linear functional. But actually in this case, it's a lot easier to use it to mean the, to use it in this more general sense and then uh, use facts to conclude that BR is finite. And that's in fact what we're going to do is we're going to prove that um, the norm of BR is finite. So let, um, do 
Do I use B1 of Y at all? No. Let B1 be the ball of radius 1 here, B10, B the ball of radius 1 with three, um, and this is in X. So 0 here is in X, and this ball of radius 1, it's radius 1 with respect to the norm that we have on X. Um, we want to prove that BR, well actually this supremum, um, it, it's also more useful to use the supremum as norm x less than or equal to 1. Um, is this, does this, does this change anything? I'm pretty sure it doesn't. Um, because I'm pretty sure it's gonna attain its max. Yeah, th this is, this is fine. Let's just go with this. So, anyways, we want to prove that the norm of BR, which we can write now as the supremum, overall x in b1 of the norm of brx and prove this is finite. By uniform boundedness principle it suffices to prove that the supremum overall x in b1 of b x y is finite for all y in y, um, and this this by the way, this is actually part. I'm pretty sure this is part b of the uniform boundedness principle, but basically follows from part a um, because y is not meager in itself because it's complete. So, for all y and y, the supremum over all x in b1 of br of x evaluated at y is certainly going to be less than or equal to bl of y. And this is finite. And why is that? That is because BLY maps so your BL BLY is B of dot and Y. And this is a, this is a linear functional from X to Z. And so that means it's bounded. And so its bound is finite. So That means by uniform bound in this principle that BR is finite. So, for all x, x and x, and y and y, such that the norm of the pair x, y, and the product um, thing is equal to 1, we have b of x, y is less than or equal to br times x times y, which is just less than, because if, if this product thing is 1, this is just the max. And so these are all have norm at least 1, or at most 1, so this is less than or equal to br. So... Hence, B is continuous. And I'm pretty sure, I don't think that this uses the fact that X is complete. So for this problem, you might be able to get away with having only one of these two sets be um, Bonnock 
but I'm not completely sure about that. I'd, I'd really want to go through and really just make sure I'm not using completeness anywhere before saying that. But we definitely use the completeness of Y here because that's how we use that. You, you need that in order to apply the uh, uniform boundedness principle. But that's the only place we used it. Um, we certainly didn't use the uniform boundedness principle on the set X itself. So yeah, you might not even need X to be complete. Um, cause yeah, we don't, none of these linear maps are mapping into X. Um, so yeah, the fact that Z is, uh, Z is a Bonnock space gives you that all these linear, all these, all these, um, spaces of linear functionals are Bonnock spaces. And so yeah, you might be able to get, get away with a little less whatever really um that's not it's interesting to take note of but it's not like super important at least at least not if your goal is to just solve the given problem but if you want a little more insight that's something to think about is to think about is this completely necessary is it completely necessary for both x and y to be bonox spaces and i don't think it is but in either case, we've completed the exercise as it is stated.